These were my dream companies when I started learning how to code. But here I was in my third year in 2019 with zero knowledge on how to get into any of them. All I knew was that I needed to code. And fast forward to 2022 and I had an offer from Google that I was gonna join after quitting Amazon. When I first started, I didn't know anything. I had some experience with C++ in my 12th grade, but I never really understood any of it. I was basically starting from scratch and in just under two years, I was working at my dream company. Now, I don't know if you're just starting from scratch or you already have a time of experience in the industry. Anyway, I can make this process really simple for you guys because I have gone through all of it. After going through a bunch of books, questions, courses, websites, I can tell you it's actually not that difficult. And today I want to share everything that has worked for me. Here are four tips. I can share these tips with you guys and I promise if you follow them properly and put in all the work, you'll come out of this really prepared to crack any company. But before that, I want you to go ahead and follow me on Instagram. It was late 2021 and I was working as a software engineer at Amazon. It was still work from home and I wanted to move out of the country for my master's and I was already done with my GRE and TOEFL and I had applied to a bunch of universities and I was all prepared and then something interesting happened. I got a message on LinkedIn. It was from a recruiter at Google asking me if I was interested in applying at Google. What? So I said yes. Now the recruiter wanted me to interview in a few weeks, but I pushed it to January, which gave me a little over a month to prepare. And you won't believe what happened next. I didn't prepare. And I had to interview with Google with no preparation. The interviews were mostly based on dynamic programming, graphs, medium array questions. The questions weren't that difficult, but definitely on the trickier side. And I somehow made through the phone screen and all the interview rounds. I was sure I'm not getting it. And then the recruiter called me. I was told that I had one leaning no hire, which meant that I had very slim chances. So the recruiter asked me for an additional technical interview, which I said yes to. And that went pretty well, I guess, because in a few weeks I get a call from the recruiter telling me that I have an L4 software engineering offer from Google. I thought that I was interviewing for L3. Turns out that L3 and L4 have the same interview. Based on your performance in the interviews, they decide if you get L3 or L4, considering that you would have the required amount of work experience for an L4. During this time, I had a little over one and a half years of experience. And just two years before this, I didn't know how to write code properly. So here is my advice on how to go from zero to clearing FANG interview rounds quickly in a simple systematic way without getting stuck. I've always loved building things. So in my first semester, I started learning HTML and CSS and I built a few websites. I thought that would be enough, but it wasn't. I needed to learn a programming language. The main three options were C++, Python, and Java. I'll suggest that you stick to one of these three because it will be easier for the interviewer to grade you on these programming languages. Because most often than not, they'll know these three. I started with C++ and I spent a considerable amount of time learning that. It's not the easiest language to get started in. It has quite a learning curve, but I think it is a really good programming language for beginners if you have the time and the energy to invest in it. I then moved on to Python for my own projects because of how simpler it was to write as compared to C++. Python is a pretty good language too if you want to get started really quickly. The most important part in all of this is to pick a programming language and stick to it. But when I was starting out as a beginner, I started learning C++ through a ton of different YouTube videos and then I got bored and moved to different programming languages which were cooler at that time. I don't recommend this because I wasted almost a an year and I didn't make a lot of progress. But in 2018 when I had already messed up my chances for on-campus internships, I realized that I needed a more structured approach. So I bought a course, I studied it, I stuck to it, solved a bunch of questions and practiced everything that I needed to. And I realized that learning a programming language is actually quite simple and anyone telling you otherwise is just trying to sell you something. You start with writing a hello world program, then you learn about variables and data types and how to take inputs and how to print outputs. You then move on to operators, conditionals, loops, functions, arrays, classes, objects, strings, and lastly learn all the object oriented concepts for that language because they are super important for interviews. You can start reading online blogs to read about all the topics and then start writing code as well. Then you can move on to solving simple problems like star patterns. It will be really monotonous at first, but I want you to stick to it for a few days because at the end of this, you'll have a much better understanding of the programming language. But if you're still stuck and you want to go more in depth and need a guided approach, I've just started a new channel, link is in the description, where I'll be starting C++ from scratch and go on to all the important advanced topics. So go ahead and subscribe to that channel as well. We'll go over from basics of programming to advanced data structures and algorithms like DP and graph so that once you're out of this, you feel ready for any interview. And if you want to talk to me one on one, you can book time with me. The link is in the description.
Learning about data structures and algorithms is the most useful step into tracking any interview because almost every interview that I've taken was based on data structures and algorithms. There's a lot of amazing content on what to study and even I've made a couple of videos going over them. That will be linked down below or in the i button. An average interview lasts about 45 minutes. So it is important that once you start solving questions around data structures and algorithms, you try to limit yourselves to the 45 minute period. Even during practice, I only gave a question 30 to 45 minutes before I went ahead and looked at the solution, tried to understand it and then implemented it myself. And during interviews, I tried to spend the first 30 minutes coming up with the solution, discussing it with the interviewer, talking about the edge cases and the time complexity, and then spend the next 15 minutes actually writing code. Because the last thing you want is to spend 45 minutes writing a logically incorrect solution and spend the rest of the time optimizing it or on another question. As to what websites I used to prepare, I used Lead Code. Before that, I used the practice section of Geeks for Geek. Lead Code has a decent number of quality problems with a pretty helpful community. You can pick up all the common problems or use the company tags and then try to solve those questions within 30 to 45 minutes. Or you can use my lead code list that is linked in the description. If your goal is to crack specifically FANG level companies, you'll need to maximize medium level questions on lead code. And consistency here will take you really, really far. But you'll need to make sure that you understand the code that you write for any problem. Because as cool as that accepted and green tick looks, it's not gonna get you a job. Being good at problem solving, well. So make sure that you come up with a solution yourself or understand the tutorial and then write it yourself. The end goal here is that you should be able to come up with solutions to problems that you have never seen before in an interview. And lead code is just a means to do that just like any other website and competitive program. Also a bonus tip, try not to name your variables like this, but instead give them meaningful names because this will be a negative point in your interview. And I've seen people being rejected over this. Projects help you show your real world development skills. And a lot of people underestimate how impactful and important a good project can be. A good project will definitely make the interviewer a lot more interested in hiring you. An easy step to get started with projects is to learn web development. It's easy to get started with and then build something and then showcase it. And if you do enjoy development a lot, you can get into open source, which opens up a lot of different possibilities. Other than web development, you can try app development with Android or iOS, machine learning, AI, blockchain. There's a world of opportunities out there and some of them will be really helpful if you go for specific roles like Android developer or iOS developer or ML engineer or blockchain engineer. But one of the biggest challenges everyone faces is what projects to build and I've faced the same. And I think this is the right time to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video Cryo. Cryo is the world's first experiential learning and upskilling platform designed for aspiring developers. Cryo provides hands-on work-like projects to master computer science fundamentals and full-stack or back-end skills in an actual developer environment. You'll learn to build really interesting projects like a high-scale distributed web backend for food ordering apps like Zomato, an OTT platform and a seamless video streaming service like Netflix, a functional and scalable e-commerce app like a full-stack developer at Amazon. You'll get an in-depth interview focus system system design and data structures and algorithms curriculum to ace your interviews. And I think this covers most of the important aspects of your interview and you'll end up as a better developer. And you'll get the opportunity to pick your specialization in backend or full stack development program. Both of them are really interesting fields with a lot of opportunities. In the program, Cryo offers placement guarantee with job search support and career guidance from experienced career coaches. So what are you waiting for? Kickstart your upskilling journey by booking a free trial. So you can check out cryo.do's program by clicking the first link in the description below. All these areas are great, but I've seen great developers failing interviews because at the end of the day, it's an interview. Being an amazing engineer won't help if you aren't able to communicate your ideas properly. And the interviewer doesn't know what's going on in your mind. So you'll need to work on strengthening your communication skills. I personally have had interviews where I wasn't able to come up with a solution in 45 minutes, but I spoke my mind out throughout the interview and I got a positive feedback because the interviewer knew what's going on, where I was stuck, what was I trying to solve. And this will be really useful in your HR interview or your Googliness round, which will try to assess your experience and how you dealt with difficult situations, setbacks, mistakes, and your reviews or a difference in opinion. So while studying for my Amazon interview, I came across star pattern. I've been using this pattern for almost all the rounds. So it's not really difficult to practice your communication skills. Ask a friend to interview you and you can start explaining your solution. And honestly, you'll never regret becoming better at communicating. Also breaking down the problem, talking about different edge cases, 
cases help you uncover details about the problem that weren't shared before, which the interview wants you to ask about. And that will show as a positive point in your interview. Right now, it's the best time to learn how to code because of all the resources and everything present there. And spending six months just working on yourself will help you a lot. And my goal has always been to help you guys with my experience. And if you're just a beginner or someone with experience and wants a refresher, I'm going to cover all of this in a lot more depth on my second channel that you can subscribe to so you don't miss out. Link is in the description and it will cover almost everything that I wished I had when I was getting started. And I realized this when I was helping someone that most of the content on YouTube is not actually aimed at beginners. Someone like me can extract value from it, but a lot of people can't because of how difficult it is to follow and they just end up more confused. I think it can help a lot of people who are stuck like I was. And by the time this video goes up, I think I'll have a few lessons up. So go ahead and check that out and subscribe. Bye bye.